You know, you might think that the Sunday Psalm would say, come on, come on all you fellow Jews. God has delivered us from imperial slavery in Egypt. We're God's chosen people. Come on, let's give thanks and praise to God for God's deliverance of God's people. We're special. We've been loved by God in a very special way in the exodus from slavery. Hey, Israel, praise God. And this morning's psalm does some of that. But that which I find most curious is that Psalm 66 summons not just Israel, God's people, but all the earth, all the nations to join in praising God. All. We often begin our services at this church with a call to worship. Sometimes spoken by me, sometimes sung by the choir. We begin our service with an assembling of the congregation by offering an invitation. We're ready to begin worship now. Please silence your cell phones. Hey, you kids sit down now. Lord, okay, all your chosen family is here. Okay, now we're ready to praise God. But Psalm 66 doesn't only call God's people, Israel, to worship, but rather cranks up the loudspeaker and broadcasts to the call to worship over the whole earth calling upon all nations, indeed all the earth, to join Israel in praise. I'm sorry if you thought your religion was a personal matter or something just between me and Jesus. This morning Psalm invites the whole town, the, the whole world, to join us in worship. I'm sorry if you thought our worship as that time when we we gather in our church, uh, close the doors, and interact with God, just the church and, and God's best friends. We used to talk about public worship, distinguishing our Sunday gatherings from our times of personal uh, prayer. In Psalm 66, the worship goes more than public. It goes global. Do you think it's right to try to talk religion in public? Someone asks. Another person wonders, should we attempt to share our faith with those who are not of our faith? I think those questions are answered in a bit by this psalm. <laughs> Shout joyfully to God all the earth. Sing praises to the glory of God's name. Make glorious His praise. All you nations, bless our God. Let the sound of His praise be heard. I come to worship on Sunday in order to hear and ponder God's Word, says one person. <clears throat> worship is when I receive comfort and peace in my troubled life, says another. Uh, okay, both of those definitions of worship are fine as far as they go. But would you note this psalm pushes us beyond our prayer and praise being an in-house, intramural, personal church affair. Here the worshipers address all the earth. They shout out an invitation to all you nations. Come on, join us in worship. We're conditioned to think of our Sunday worship as praise, as something uh, between us and God. Well, this psalm urges us to look at worship as witness to the whole world. We tend to think of our times of worship as inward. This psalm invites us to think of what we do here on Sundays as outward. Jesus Christ did not die for the church. Jesus thinks all of it is his, <laughs> proclaimed an evangelist to the congregation where I grew up. The first Bible verse I learned was John 3.16. For God so loved people like me and people who look a lot like me that God gave His own. No! God so loved the world. Nobody, no corner of the world is immune from Jesus saying, Mine. That means if, if we, the church, are chosen to listen to, adore, 
praise God, we're also at the same time chosen to witness to the world about the God who has chosen us. I think it's fair to characterize this psalm as a missional psalm. Yeah, Israel has been assigned a mission by God to worship God so well in the temple and in daily life that the nations would see what a great God is Israel's God. Therefore Israel believed that we not only receive the truth, the blessing, and the liberation from God, but we also we receive an assignment. In a world where there is much ugliness, the beauty of our Sunday worship is a witness to the world of how God can take us and our gifts and form them into acts of incredible beauty. In a world where there are strong voices of hate, resentment, and animosity, the words we use in this place can be a witness to the world that God enables us to speak words of love, compassion. In a world where many tend to think of their material possessions as mine, every time we take up an offering here, <laughs> we witness it's possible for people to be open-handed and giving in response to the world's needs. We know from our encounter with the New Testament that when Christ calls, he doesn't call people to be Christians, or first of all, to have a happier, more fulfilled lives, but rather, he calls them to himself only to send them out in his name, to spread his good news to everybody. The word mission means to send. We're commissioned as his agents, his carriers of the infection called gospel. America has some striking, fierce divisions. And this town has its gaps, its walls, its big divides. How is it possible for a group of folk like us to gather and sing off the same page, so to speak? It's an affirmation of faith that Jesus Christ makes possible that which the world considers impossible. Christ has called us not only to believe in him, but also to follow him. Even more, to emulate him, to engage in the same moves in our lives that characterized his life, to sing the notes that he sung in order that the whole world might join in the song that Christ sings. Our church is called to be a showcase for what God can do. Yeah, the world is quite right to look at us and see an organization that is markedly different from the world. The pagan world in Rome uh, looked at the early church and marveled that here was a group of people that was not organized as the world organized itself on the basis of family or gender or class, money. The surrounding Roman culture said, look, how they love one another. <laughs> to be honest, too often the world looks at congregations today and exclaims, wow, look how they fight with each other. We're called to be a showcase. We have a loving, caring church. When any member of this church is in need, the rest of us immediately respond. We have one another's back. A person said to me recently, now, now while it was heartwarming to hear her positive assessment of her congregation, I said, I, maybe inspired or corrected by this psalm, sorry, that's not good enough. Even as Israel is to be the visible public witness to who God is and what God is up to in the world, the church is, for better or worse, the body of Christ. The way the risen Christ is chosen to take up room in the world. Christ's great appeal to the world. That's us. 
when you think about the actual churches you know, you're apt to think that, well, it's a heck of a way to present the kingdom of God to the world. But it, it is decisively, distinctively His way. God could have chosen others. Oddly, God chose us. We cannot say why we have been chosen by God to be the church. But we know the wherefore. The joy of the Christian life is that we have received good news. The responsibility of the Christian life is that we are to bear this news into the world. This morning's psalm gathers God's people only to have them enter the temple by inviting also the whole world. Just a few concluding questions. Uh, how inviting and welcoming is our congregation? In our signage, our, our signs, in the way we receive visitors, do we really convey hospitality to the whole world? When we make decisions about how we will use our church resources, the programs we'll offer and the work we'll do, are we motivated by mostly inward or outward concern? Is our worship accessible to all? On Sunday, do we look something like the realm of God? Do we do a good job of explaining and teaching others about our style of worship so that they may join us in our praise of God? I think these questions are important because as the body of Christ, as Paul's favorite designation for the church, as the body of Christ, our church may be the only bodily presence of Christ the world gets to see. When the world looks at us on Sundays, what does the world see of Christ? All you nations, all, bless our God. Let the sound of God's praise be heard. Amen.